Welcome back everybody. In this episode, we're replacing the water filler door on our Jayco journey. Now, if you have any modern Jayco caravan, camper trailer, or anything that uses a coast to coast water filler, this little guy will help you out because it's a little bit tricky doing this replacement if for some reason your door has come loose and you've lost it on your journey. And if that isn't enough, I'm also going to do a full unit replacement of our white water filler assembly just to show you how that's done as well. So let's get into it and I'll show you how. So you'll notice with your new door, if that's what you're looking to replace, that you'll get this door assembly, the keys, and also this little pin. And this is the drama that you'll face when you're trying to install the new door. If we use this full assembly I've got here, where the door opens just like so, on the back side, you can see where this little pin slips in from the top. So when we pull this out, we need to try to release this pin so that we can put the new door in and either put the new pin in or pop this pin back down if it's still intact. Now, what I suspect happens with a lot of these caravans with these flaps is that the flap comes loose, wobbles around, and this pin actually rattles itself up and releases the door. It falls off and goes flying down the road. So what I'm going to do is put the pin into place and then, because I need to seal this up anyway, put some sealant in over the top of this pin so that it holds it in place in the frame so that in the unfortunate circumstance this does come open the pin isn't going to rattle itself up and out of the hinge releasing the door. Now when it comes to the door itself it's not as easy as just clipping this in shutting it up and locking it and you're on your way. You need to remove this assembly and you'll see there are six screws which release it from the wall of the caravan. And it's worthwhile noting that there will often be some sealant around that you need to cut away and release so you can pull this filler assembly out also. I'm just using a number two Phillips head screwdriver. Now in our case, we've got a bit of a mastic seal that runs down through the J-mold here on both sides. However, it feels like I can gently pry this off and release it from the wall of the caravan itself. So even on ours, we don't have a gasket. It's just been sealed in with this flexible, malleable sealant. Now that you've got the filler assembly loose off the side of the van, you want to clean off whatever sealant is evident in behind here so that you can bond it back onto the side of the van. In most cases, and in particular with newer Jayco's, there'll be a butyl sealant that is used to seal and mold these onto the side of the van. But if you look at older models, such as our Jayco Swan camper trailer, these are sealed on with silicon. Now, I was a little bit puzzled why they'd use a butyl mastic, but when you pull this off, it's incredibly easy to clean away and you'll see it leaves very little residue, which makes reassembling this quite easy. And the problem with the silicon is it's extremely hard to clean off, particularly on these checker plate materials. So then my hunt went on to trying to find some butyl tape and it actually wasn't that hard. I found this particular tape from Amazon and it came the next day. So I'll put a link to this particular product in the description so that if you're like us and having to replace the door or change the whole assembly, it's a good idea to order in some of this butyl sealant as it's non-hardening and it will conform to all the contours of the surface that you're trying to seal this back onto. So these pins obviously slide into the side of the door like so in through the back of this assembly. The pin may shear off and get stuck in there, or if you're lucky, it'll just fall out and disappear. And that's why you get a pin with a replacement door. Now, if you're unfortunate enough that the pin is stuck in behind here, you probably only have a little flathead screwdriver and you may be lucky enough that you can get in behind here and flick the pin up so that you can release it out of the assembly. The best thing to use, however, if you have one on hand is a pick tool that allows you to get in behind the assembly and you should be able to flick the pin out of the assembly itself. But in any case, you need to remove this so that you can put the pin in from behind and put your new door in. So fitting the new door is actually reasonably easy. 
you fit the door in like so, push it into place and then get this pin and you need to slide it down from behind and it's just a case of jiggling the door around and the pin until it falls down into place. So now that we've been through all of that and we're at the point of putting this door back on permanently, I will quickly go around and clean all the backing surfaces with some isopropyl cleaning alcohol. That will make sure you've got rid of any residual sealant and the surface is ready for your new butyl tape to bond onto. And then you might need to come along with a blade just to clean off any silicon if you've got that in your particular instance, which I'll show you in the second part where we install the water assembly onto the side of our Jayco Swan. Now that we've cleaned around the surface with our isopropyl cleaning alcohol, we can finally get to the task of the final install of the door by popping it in, inserting the pin firmly, and I'd suggest using something with a 90 degree angle that you can get in there and push the pin down so you know it's securely in place. And you might have to have a few goes just to get this locked in correctly. And, and it is extremely hard because you can't see in behind here to make sure it's located in the correct position. But now that we're happy that this is in the correct location, I'm just gonna put some silicon into the back channel here so that it will dry onto the pin and make sure that it doesn't pop around as you're traveling down the track. Make sure you wipe off any excess and I think it's a good idea just to have some gloves and some paper towel ready so that you don't make a real mess. While we've got the silicon out, I'm just going to dab a little bit of sealant onto all six of the fixing screws. Then we're ready to put the sealant in and fix it back into place. And now it's just a case of installing your tape or sealant which we'll show you in a lot more detail in the second half of this episode also. Then you place your fixing screws, making sure you don't do them up too tight and pull the thread out. And then we trim off the excess tape using a sharp knife, being careful not to cut into the wall panel itself. And it's done. But for a little bit more detail, let's go into the shed and we'll do the full install on the swan so you can see what this is all about. So if you want to be extra diligent in making sure this is correctly sealed in and the silicon's in place to secure the pin, all that sort of gear, this next section is for you. Because the best method is to remove this completely. That allows you to clean the back surface of the water filler housing itself before you go to put your new door on. Or if you're crazy like me, you're replacing your old daggy white one with the new shiny black one. So we've got the full kit here, which includes the water filler assembly with the door already assembled, two keys, and this rubber gasket. And you'll find in most instances, this rubber gasket isn't used by most caravan manufacturers. Unless you've got a completely smooth wall, say on a touring model, where you've got the full fiberglass wall without any checker plate, you'll find that most manufacturers will still seal in these water filler assemblies as this provides a more watertight seal and takes up any undulations in the wall finish itself. And you'll also get this extra spigot, which simply clicks into the back to allow you to fix the second tank's hose and vent hose onto the back of this filler assembly as well. And you'll see through the rest of this episode, the best method to put this back in is to fix it back onto the side of your van, and then you go back inside and refix all the hoses once this is securely fixed in place. So firstly, I'll run you through the methodology of removing this old water filler assembly, including the hoses and whatnot from the back. So the first steps are exactly the same as what we did to our Jayco journey, where we remove the screw fixings, pull the unit off, and if you've got a camper trailer, you might wanna make sure that the roof is up so that you can access the cupboard in behind if you need to get to any of the pipes or hardware in changing this unit over. Now, before you go too far, you wanna make sure you can gain access into the cupboard or the area where all your hoses go into the back of the filler inlet itself. You'll find with most caravans and camper trailers, in particular these Jayco's, they don't give you a lot of wiggle room. Because the pipes usually come in and go back down through the floor, they're also sealed into the floor and you can't flex them out all that far to undo the hose clamps. 
in our Swan, for instance, the inlet sits down below our fold down robe. And you could actually fold this robe down and the top panel of the cupboard is screwed in so you could remove it. And that gives really good access into the pipework and the hose clamps to disassemble all that and pull it out. The only thing I discovered is that there's probably about 20 screws you need to remove and it's incredibly awkward to get in there. So for now, I'm gonna persevere with trying to gain access through the little cupboard down under here and also by accessing all the pipe work from the outside. I think I can just pull the panel out enough to undo the hose clamps, undo it all, pull it out. But the real challenge is gonna be putting it back in because we need to force those hoses securely back onto those barbs, tighten it all up without it all coming back apart. So once you've released all the screws out of the assembly, it's just a case of running a sharp blade around the outside and just work it down underneath the frame and you'll feel it starting to release. I've been using a steel rule because it's thin enough to get in and sort of separate the silicon from the panel itself. And then we should be able to lever it off. But note, as per the journey, there's still not a lot of give in the pipes. Another interesting point to note, if you're changing the color as we're doing here, is that you'll have white fixing screws and obviously the new units don't come with fixing screws. So you can either put it back in with the white ones, which will probably look a little bit weird. Um, I'll go and find some black ones to make it all nicey nice when we put it all back together. And now for the fun part of undoing the hose clamps and disconnecting the hoses from the rear of the filler panel. To undo the hose clamps, you need either a Phillips head or flat blade screwdriver. Most hose clamps will also have a seven mil hex fitting. So you can use a small spanner such as this, or I find even a really small seven mil socket is really handy to get into the back of these cupboards if you can't get access from the outside. You'll notice that the mains filler line is threaded onto the back of the filler point. So you'll also need a large shifter to undo that and pull it off. I'd also have a small container and a towel handy that you can put down to catch any water that might be released from the pipes when you loosen them off. In our case, I could pull this out just enough to get a small little flat blade screwdriver down onto the hose clamps. And then it was a case of just gently jiggling the hoses off and our filler assembly is finally released from the side of the van. Be sure to put your hose clamps back on the hoses and pay particular attention to the orientation because if you put them in upside down, it'll make it a lot harder to get a screwdriver or a seven mil socket onto the ends of these to do them up tight due to the lack of clearance you have from inside the cupboard or void inside your caravan or camper trailer. And you'll see on the back of the filler assembly here, there's a number of barb fittings. That's your vent hose and that's the actual filler inlet for your water tank. If you've got two water tanks, you'll have another inlet barb on this side as well. And then just here, there's a threaded fitting and that's for your main water supply into the van. That simply threads off. Make sure you install some new thread tape onto this fitting before you fit it back into your caravan or camper trailer. And I'll show you that very shortly. And now because our water filler assembly was siliconed onto the side of this particular camper trailer, we've got to clean off all the silicon. I've done a full video on resealing the roof and went through a few methods for removing the silicon. My tool of choice is a flat blade such as this that you get from Sid Chrome. These are fantastic. You just have to be really careful with the black finish that you don't scratch it all up. You can also get these plastic scrapers from Bunnings or other hardware stores. These aren't as effective I found, however, they are a lot more forgiving in protecting the finish and make sure you don't scratch it all up. So it's a case of just gently going around and you can see the outline of where the filler assembly previously sat. So you don't wanna to work too far out of that and damage the visible coating, but you wanna go around and start scraping off excess silicon so that we can put our new filler assembly in and it will seal up nice and tight onto the side panel. And it's just a case of gently running the blade over to remove the thick portions of silicon. And it's a little bit tricky because of the checker plate material here that you keep hitting the ridges of the checker plate pattern itself. But you wanna get as much of this silicon off as you possibly can. Noting that it will all be covered up once you put your new filler assembly in anyhow. And you'll also note that rubbing your fingers along the residual silicon that's left on the panel We'll actually remove a fair bit of it without damaging the surface. 
And then it's just a case of running over with some isopropyl alcohol once it's all done. You'll also note with these really sharp blades that they bite in when you're going forwards. With this silicon, so we're not damaging the surface too much, you can sometimes scrape it backwards, just keep it on the inside edge, and this will slowly release the silicon or scrape it off the surface as well. Now, as you can see, that was a fairly tedious task. So you can now see the advantage of using a non-curing sealant on these particular surfaces where you might need to remove a cover panel off to access, in our case, all the plumbing in behind. And now we're ready to install the new filler assembly. The important thing is to make sure all the fittings on the back of your new assembly match those of the one you just pulled out. In particular, the threads on the rear of the filler inlet here are matching on your new one, even though the color is different on this. And one important thing is I found this rubber O-ring inside the filler itself, which needs to go into the hose so that it will seal onto the back of the assembly like so. So have a double check to make sure there's nothing left over in your old filler assembly that needs to go with your new one before you go and install it. Again, because it's such a confined space that you're working in. The next thing we wanna do is wrap some plumber's tape around the threaded inlet of your main filler. And I always make sure that we've got seven to 10 turns around the thread. So we've got a really nice tight seal as you do with any threaded tap fitting. So I've got eight turns on this, which feel around about right with the threads. And make sure you do it in a clockwise direction. That way, when you turn the new fitting on, you're not pulling the tape back off. And now it's time to put some sealant onto the pin, which is a lot easier to do when this is fully removed, and then put the sealant around the outside. So pop on some gloves like before, and then we're simply going to put a little dollop of silicon just in this area where you can see the pin here to make sure it doesn't move out while we're in transit. So just grab a little bit on your finger, push it down into the groove and try not to make too much of a mess on the side. And you'll notice I actually found some black screws at Bunnings, which are the correct size. So what we'll do is we'll quickly dip these in the silicon while we've got it out. And then they're ready to install into the side of the van when we go to put the water filler assembly in. And now the process of installing this butyl tape is a lot easier when we've got the water filler assembly out like this. I simply get a ruler, measure out the lengths, cut them, and then we can place them around the outside of the water filler assembly itself. And because you've got this white backing tape, you can easily mark the length that you need to cut. And then some sharp scissors, easily cut through. And you can cut off your lengths of butyl tape, just like that. I find it a lot easier than a knife because you get a nice clean cut and you don't score and stretch and manipulate the end of the butyl tape while you're trying to cut it down. Make sure you have some really good sharp scissors because it does make a difference. And so I'll put the top strip on first, then we'll run down the sides and then put the bottom strip on. You want to allow a little bit of overlap And you'll see that's a lot easier to install the butyl tape, which you will trim off once you install this onto the van. That way you can just run a knife around the outside, which again, we'll show you as we get through the process. Now you'll notice I've used the butyl tape as we did with the journey outside. I've actually stuck this in previously and I've pulled it back out just to change the methodology around a little bit. And I can confirm it sticks extremely well. It was a little bit tricky to get off the side of these plastics, but it came off the aluminium cladding on the side of the Swan, extremely easy. So in my case, I think this is the best method for affixing these sort of panels where you might wanna pull them off for servicing down the track. If you wanna go down the silicon route, you always have the neutral cure silicons. I've typically used the Bostic V4. It's only available in white. So if you're doing black, you would have to go down and get a Bostic V60 if you wanted to save the Bostic brand. But given that this might need to come out down the track for servicing, I certainly wouldn't use a polyurethane sealant as it will bond this to the side of the van 
and it will be incredibly hard to remove. So let's go down and we'll pop this back in. Now before we put our water filler assembly back in, we want to make sure that we've got our hose clamps on the hoses and they're around the right way so when you go in to fix them in from inside, you can get either a 7mm socket or a screwdriver onto them to fix them back into place. And then it's just a simple case of grabbing your water filler assembly that you've already taped up and push it into place. But don't push it on too hard just yet. You want to get a few screws and quickly get them into place to make sure that it's in the correct location. Once we're happy it's in the correct location, we can push it down all nice and hard and then finish the installation of the screws. And then you want to run around with a sharp blade to trim off any excess butyl tape. Just be really careful because you will etch into the surface of the panel that you're fixing into. So you want to have enough pressure that you can put on and cut a nice clean line without cutting too much of the panel, particularly if you're cutting into fiberglass. The aluminium is fairly forgiving, but fiberglass you don't want to cut it too hard. So I simply run down and around and then you can peel the tape off just like that. Give it a quick wipe down with some isopropyl alcohol then we duck inside to reattach those hoses. Now it's pretty hard to show but that's the vent tube on and the main water tank filler tube on and now it's just a case of screwing this mains hose onto the back of the filler inlet and I'll come back with a spanner and tighten that on. You'll also know with the Coast to Coast water filler kit, they're only set up for one water tank, but they do provide the additional barb fitting. So you simply push out the little bit of plastic on the filler assembly, clip this into place, and then your hoses go onto the rear of the barb fitting, just like so. And then you do up the hose clamp and you're all ready to go. And just like the journey, we've got a nicely installed, neat and tidy black filler cap on the back of our Jayco Swan. Now, as you can see, it's a bit of a fiddly job, but for most people, they'd be doing this because their existing is damaged or something needed to be done, particularly if you need to access some of the lines or replace the lines that are associated with the filler system of your caravan or camper trailer. And I've also got the other second improvement piece for just behind me here, which is the matching fridge vent. So it's all nicey nice and consistent down one side. Now these vents also come with the black frame that you can fix into the side of your van. However, I don't think you really notice the white bits in behind anyhow. And if you were to replace this, you would have to cut it out and reseal it all back in. So for now, that looks tops. It ties in with our new black water filler assembly, our updated black wheels, and updates the look of the whole side of the camper trailer, which I really like. And so there you have it. If you made it this far, and you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. We've got a lot of DIY tutorials and camping trips coming up. And please put a few comments down below. Share it around as it helps us greatly with YouTube. Anyway, I've got to get on to this next project. So thanks for watching. And as I always say, get out there, stay safe, have fun, and we'll catch you next time.